uh, the hour has arrived, as you can tell. It is 11 o'clock, my clock. And uh, we want to welcome everybody, including those that are online. We've got quite a crew online, and um, they're muted just because of the way the, uh, the go to meeting is. And uh, so those that are in attendance, we do welcome all of you on that are on the, the remote session. And this is Rob Gillespie. I'm talking right now. And Ed is going to do the major part of the presentation. This is the second half of our uh, 50 tips and tricks in 50 minutes that's taken us three hours to do. Um, You're presenting right now. I am presenting. So I don't you want to just minimize that little screen on the right? Or we'll switch the table to me. OK. So what we're going to do is Ed's, uh, yeah, just take that off there. Ed is going to do a presentation of the balance of the 50 tips. And then at the end of the session, after lunch, I'll take about 15 or 20 minutes. We'll talk about uh, Excel reporting and uh, BI uh, foundation, and then talk briefly about the difference between what well, we've got a new, a new offering out there Microsoft has put out. It's called Business Ready Licensing. And I'll go through the Capabilities tab index on the price sheet and show you the difference between uh, what they now offer and end on that note. So with that in mind, what we will do is this is a lunch and learn. And even though there are some people on the uh, remote connectivity, they have the option of going to and asking a question. I will monitor the questions and uh, see if we can get back to you in regards to that. But those that are in this room in attendance, if you have a question, certainly bring it up. We're not, we're just, we want to address your questions as we go. And uh, we'll turn the time over to Ed now and uh, take off. Okay. This presentation originally was called 50 Tips in 50 Minutes. And it was presented at the Great Plains Conference. And they did 50 Tips in 50 Minutes. And we were dizzy. It went so fast. So we broke it up into 50 tips in 90 minutes, and we didn't get it done even in that. So now it's 25 tips in 90 minutes, parts one and two. And I've gotten the whole slide deck up here from the first presentation and the second. If you didn't come last month and find that some of the little things I'm just going to cruise through are interesting to you, be sure that we have your email where you signed in, and um, we will send these off to you. So you're going to see not only the slide deck, but these screens, the notes. Normally, when we have a slide deck and we go through it, you don't see the notes. But the notes are helpful, so I'm going to show you those notes as we go through, because that's where you see the information as to where you might get more data. And um, I'm going to close this one and find the right one here, because that's not it. Um, Maybe I haven't edited these yet. Anyways, good enough. Credit goes to Marcelino and Pam Misialik from Great Plains for developing this. We're going to cover the last two sections today. We covered last time GL, purchasing and inventory sales and six assets. We went through the tips that were parts of each module. And without going through the notes here, um, just to give you an idea of what's out there. There were how to correct journal entries, drill downs, some deferrals with recurring batches, aliases in the GL accounts, duplicating a journal entry as opposed to correcting one, creating your own posting types for year end and make sure they're right. Lots of tips were there. Um, consistent account descriptions. There was a lot of really fun information. This was a great session. I really enjoyed doing it. And I'm just reading through these other titles. There's always some basic, intermediate, and more advanced. Prioritizing your vendors for payment. Tracking use tax. There was more options for use tax. Um, the new historical inventory trial balance. And a few other things.
start listing reporting, and that's where we're going to pick up right now. So I'm going to go back to this view, and we're going to talk about renaming smart list columns. So if you don't like the columns with the names that smart list offers, there's a way to rename them. So I'm going to go into Great Plains and show you what I mean. SmartList is a wonderful tool that is included with Great Plains. It's the OEM version of SmartList Builder. And there's SmartList Builder, there's Anywhere, um, what's that? Any View. Any View, <coughs> there's eNotes, there's several providers of SmartList use where you can buy the full product and connect any table to any other table as long as there's a way to link them and create your own reports that can export to Word or Excel. Taking the ones that come with the product, there's only certain things you can do. And let's As employee ID, last name, first name, address, one address, two. These aren't bad. The names look pretty consistent. But in some cases, they're not. And in the example that they give here, they're talking about ETY allocation. So you know, you get field names that can be very difficult to understand. Let's go to sales. And let's go to receivables transactions. And let's just look at receivables due today. So you get some simple fields here. I want a little more detail than that. Transactions by customer. There we go. Okay. If I look at the column names, these are the descriptions of the columns. If I were to add some of these, they are not always friendly names. And most of the names that we're seeing here have been cleaned up to be friendly. But occasionally, you get names that are rather technical. And the point here is that you can change those names. Once you bring them in, all you have to do is go to the columns, and these are highlightable. And I can change the name. I can change document number to invoice number. I can change document type to type. I can change document date to date. So instead of seeing these long names up here, when I say OK, they're the short names that I gave them. And that's how they'll go to Excel. So when I click to export to Excel, and I get to Excel report, those are the names that I get in here. So we can make those just as friendly as you want them. We often have field names where the column of numbers is just four characters wide. We got this header that's 50 characters wide. And so we want to shrink them down to be friendly and meaningful. So tip number one, we go to the smart list. Whatever smart list we have, we just go to columns, and we change the name. Here's the original name on the right. Here's the short name that we gave it on the left. Remember this about smart list. We say OK and run it. Remember to go to favorites and save the modification. Otherwise, the next time you open, it's gone. If I cancel and go to another report and then come back to this one, it's back to the old name because I didn't save it. If I go to columns and call this type and say OK, so it's type, and go to favorites, modify, then when I move off and come back, it is type. I save that change. You can create a new report by just giving it a new name. But anytime you change, the sorting, the column names, the columns that are included, anything else in that report, remember to save the modification. Rob, you have a comment? I see. Uh, the question would be, would this modification that's been saved be specific to the user that's logged in? So if another user makes this change, is this global, or is it specific to the user? It depends on when you save the modification or give it a favorites name, who you ran access to. 